Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Castlevania 2. Um, I didn't do my grinding off screen because I intend to do that after I claim the thing I'm looking for. Oh, Jesus. So yeah, to my knowledge, you will never be sent through a bottomless pit because of false blocks. Which is a little more forgiving, but it also does make it feel like they're there just to annoy you. So, there's that. So now, yeah, I gotta climb the wall all the way back. Theoretically speaking, this could be a good opportunity to grind, but it isn't. I don't have the shield yet, but that's a thing that you can get. Well, the good news is, is that he'll respawn off screen. So, a term that gets thrown around a lot today is a Metroidvania. Um, and I want to be clear, I believe in very classic Metroidvanias. But they're called that because of Castlevania and Metroid, naturally. Oh yeah, it's possible to buy the white crystal instead of um, the holy water. I think that that's stupid though, because the holy water grants you the ability to throw stuff through blocks and see what's real and what's not. The white crystal is a key item that allows you access to other areas, but only a little later. Whereas this allows traversal and easy use of the mechanic. Because you can throw the holy water through blocks, as I showed. Oh god. It'd be nice if you got XP for killing things. Instead of just getting it for... Earning money. Because it's kind of a weird system that way, you know? Um, yeah, so classic Castlevanias um, are not the Vania in Metroidvania. A Metroidvania are games like Metroid or Castlevania, wherein the player can only advance through the world. There we go. Through uh, clever use of shortcuts, items, and certain keys to access areas they weren't able to access before. God damn, I forget that every time. I don't know how much XP I need to level up, and I'm worried. Because I could just lose it. And that would shuck. Luckily, this guy's just a regular skeleton. Um, so, a lot of people say Dark Souls is a Metroidvania. I don't really think it is. Um, it has keys and shortcuts, but it doesn't have, like, the ability to buy a double jump or wing boots to make getting over certain areas easier. Or, um, anything like that. It's just a matter of keys and where to put them. And traversal through the game is dependent on um, your own skill. That's really the main thing that determines whether or not you'll be able to play it. This being a classic Nintendo game, of course, if there's more than a few uh, sprites on the screen, the game will just start to, uh, as you say, shit its ass. Yeah, and this one isn't super that. It kind of is, but it has some things that make me not want to say it is a proper Metroidvania. Oop. Which is weird because, I mean, it's the Vania, right? I love the look of these weird sprites. All right, so we found the first key item, this bowling ball. Get up and use it. 
And you've used the oak steak. And then you... Yeah, there you go. You now process Dracula's rib. A lot of people commented on the weird, um... Organs you end up fighting as a result of playing this game. I... I think it makes more sense that Simon has been doing stuff off-screen in the four years between this game and Castlevania 1. That's what makes the most sense to... Oh, yeah. Gotta reselect this. That's what makes the most sense to me. That, you know, Simon's been working, working hard for the money ever since he got cursed. And that you're basically just cleaning up the last couple bits of it. Oh, we do have to fall down to get the shortcut. That's right. So you'll also notice that enemies don't walk to uh, don't walk over open pits because of course why would they? Yep. So we now have um, this. So when we stop, we hold up this little shield. It doesn't do much, but it will protect us from certain projectiles. God damn it. Um, I'll be right back. I'm going to grind. Hey, so I did a little grinding and uh, we're back up. Oh, man. There we go. So, yeah, we're now one level higher. So you can see that the rib will protect us from little projectiles like that. But you know, not from this fella. And of course, only from the front. Oh gosh. This fella again, huh? Pardon me, Mr. Skelton. So yeah, I'm not sure why Dracula's rib gives you the ability to do that. But yeah, as discussed, there are uh, some weird picks for what organs you actually are collecting in this game. Now we can just use that little hole to drop down. Oops. So yeah, once we get back out, we're going to head back to the first town, which I believe is called Jova. I was hoping on not dying, but I don't know if I'm if that's a luxury I have. Okay. Oh god. Well, that's me dead. Bro. That's not cool. And unfortunately, I now need another 50 hearts. That'll start us. That water is interesting because it's not an instant kill, but it will hurt the player. Meaning that if you have items that make you take less damage, you can avoid dealing with them. So yes, I was trying to get the good ending. I'm not sure if I'll be able to. Does that look really blue to anyone? I love those bisexual mountains in the background. Thank you, Fishman. Bro, I'm just, I'm dragging myself through broken glass here. Yeah, we're back down to zero.
So yeah, this game isn't cool because the projectiles you reflect back at enemies do not damage them. I don't have as much practice at this game. Not that practice helped me beat Castlevania 1. That's the game I played. Also, it's weird that Belmont was very obviously a brunette on the cover of Castlevania 1. And that his hair was modeled brown. Hey, though. The morning sun has vanquished the horrible night. Thank you. I recently watched uh, season two of the Castlevania anime with my lovely wife yesterday. Uh, in case you're wondering, yes, I am living the dream. We got drunk at a uh, Mexican place last night, took a lift home after arguing about Bionicle lore and the worst episode of, well, my least favorite episode of uh, Black Mirror. So yes. The guide I used recommends killing these two werewolves. I actually used a, a better guide, though. Um, but I don't know how else to get hearts right now. Of note, I'm going to want to get back to town as soon as I can, because you cannot use... shops... while it is night. That will also waste more of my time and make it so I'm not going to be able to beat this game. And of course, beating this game without a walkthrough is a night. Sir. Sir. Beating this game without a walkthrough is a horrible night to have a curse. 30 hearts. What's the time? It's 1 in the afternoon. I love the look of those trees back there as well. Dude, okay, this is minor spoilers for- that was stupid of me. Hey, so I'm back in Jova just to demonstrate. So this is what I would be doing if I had enough hearts. I would buy a white crystal. But I cannot, so the only thing that I can do is tell that man, no, I will not buy you a white crystal. Though there is something else we can do here. Um. For a while, Nintendo had rules against uh, portraying Jesus in these games. This has a proper crucifix, though. And churches, um, like they do in many fantasy worlds, of course, regenerate your health. A crooked trader is offering bum deals in this town. I'm not sure what he means by that, but I think it refers to the man selling a white crystal. Okay, also, the two things you need to buy, if you've noticed, are right next to each other. See, so, yes, this might legitimately stop me from being able to get the good ending. Anyway, I want to mention a thing about Castlevania Season 2, the anime Season 2, the Netflix original show. Minor spoilers for anyone who isn't watching it, but, um... Belmont returns to his family home. There's a large oil painting of Leon Belmont. And, uh, I squealed with delight. Oh, yeah, what a horrible night to have a curse, though. I squealed with delight upon seeing Leon Belmont in that anime. God damn, I love Leon Belmont. I love him and his stupid soliloquizing. Forever remembered as the man who tried to kill an entire time of day. See, so yes, as here, um, everyone has gone back inside and everyone was replaced with these weird green monsters. Of various varieties. However, you can use them to grind because they are real monsters. As you see. However, this means that we will not be able to use the trader for a while because we'll need to wait out night. We also cannot go into this building. Normally you press the whip button to use things because, let's be honest here, the NES controller has a D-pad, a start, a select, and an A and a B button. There are eight inputs total on that thing. 
Granted, one of them is used for paws, and one of them is used for other paws, but... But yeah, there's a lot of things in this game that I really do enjoy. Am I not getting XP? Why? Yes, I'm still level 1, though. That's good. I always chose to see that as a thing of, like, how Belmont is... Like, Belmont is... Even though he was already a legendary monster hunter, he's forced to survive in this cruel, harsh world, and he's level zero by comparison. But yes, Castlevania anime. Leon Belmont from Lament of Innocence shows up, and goddamn, it was really cool seeing him acknowledged in any capacity by Konami. Um... And there was another thing that made me very soft. Um, Trevor, when returning to his childhood home, recognizes a tree and mentions that it was his tree. Uh, his language kind of confuses Sypha, his traveling companion, and he says that was the tree I used to play on. And, you know, he speaks about it, and then he says, good night, tree. And like, man... Trevor isn't quite a himbo. I think he is too... Uh, impolite for that. But, man, he's a good guy. I like him. But yeah, I'm gonna pause the recording so we can buy this white crystal. Oh god. Sorry, my, my guide was on. I'm using a guide by someone named Jason Graves. Alright. There you are. Buy a white crystal? Yes. All right. Back on our way. All right. Just checked my good old guide. As I mentioned, yes, I'm using a guide by someone named Jason Graves. Um, I have far not enough hearts for this. So I'm going to go back to the first first village. Um, something to mention, you can actually only hold a maximum of 255 hearts because, you know, it's a classic computational limit. Also, because of course it does, uh, Bloody Tears plays during the big, like, storm on Castle Dracul. And, like, I'm kind of reminded of how that song is not really good for fight scenes. It's good. It's a good adventuring tune, I think. I think that's really where it shines. <laughs> Alright, thank you, sir. But yes. Were I to have wanted to beat this game with a good ending, I would need to have already gotten 200 hearts. 50 of which I would have spent getting that white crystal. The rest I would have spent uh, down these stairs, actually. This leads to the next town. Though I might head there and see if I can use their church. I hit the jump button too many times. Go, go, go. Okay. <laughs> Two fourteen. All right. Rest here for a while. So you've only got forty four. So we're going to need to do a little more grinding. So let me see if I know where I'm heading. There we go. How do I get out of here? Oh, there we go. So 
So yeah, in that room there's a false floor that you need the holy water to reveal. Ooh, bloody eyeball. Classic. Uh, hey dude. You may notice that he attacked me and uh, appeared to do no damage. What actually happened there was he did damage to me. But because of my level up, I now don't take damage. I Well, I take damage, but my life bar can only show so much. Bloody Tears is a really good song for adventuring. I love how this game just gets a few too many enemies on screen and it just starts to disintegrate. All right, this is a halfway decent grinding spot. What a horrible night to have a curse, though. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm not going to get the good ending. I was trying, but um, it doesn't look as though I'll be able to. That's okay. Um... This game is available through Steam. There is a Castlevania Legacy Collection. Um, I, oh God. Go, Simon. I'm something of a believer of the concept of voting with your money, right? He takes double damage now because it's night, of course. I'm somewhat of a believer of the concept of voting with your money. And what that basically means is you show a company or corporation that you want something by buying it. So you show Sega, for example, you don't want anything like Sonic Forces. I didn't even have to go up there. By not buying it. You show that you want more things like Sonic Mania by buying it. Sometimes that's a good thing. That was cool. I kind of like I kind of like having to do retreats as I fight enemies. Oh man, this guy's just going to be a problem though. But yes. Everyone should absolutely watch the Castlevania anime if nothing else because it is cool to see Castlevania get some respect. And because more importantly, if Konami sees how much interest people have in Castlevania, maybe they'll make a game again. But that isn't very likely. So what I really think is going to happen is they're going to sell the license and let someone else make a fucking game. Which I would probably prefer. Alright, let's see if I can do this. Actually, I'm going to cut it so I can grind. Uh, but I'll be back. I've been Alfred. This has been Castlevania 2. I'll see you guys next time. Bye and thank you.